Brent here, the Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how we build this beautiful built-in barbecue station, keep on watching. Let's start it. Now there's a lot that goes into play with an outdoor barbecue system like this, but one of the most important things to have is a high quality foundation for the barbecue itself. And that's where Grillnetics comes into play. Now I personally reached out to them and they wanted to be the brand and sponsor of this week's video. And they specifically manufacture high quality aluminum frame systems that are custom sized and built to your space and then shipped out to you directly. Now these are the original drawings as well as renders for this project and it didn't turn out quite exactly like this, but it's very nice that they actually provide this service for free as well as providing full on detailed instructions on how to fully assemble your system. But now that we have that taken care of, let's get to installing. Now today is the day of assembling these beautiful cabinets from Grillnetics and the nice thing about this is that each one is labeled for the correct size as well as all the components are in the package all together. So let's get this thing assembled. Now because these cabinets are custom made to your space, you really don't need many tools to fully assemble these entire things together. All you really need is a wrench, a caulk gun, a power drill with a few bits, an angle grinder, and I'll throw in a level in there as well, especially when the ground itself is not level. We'll get to that later. Now this is the hardware pack that comes with the kit and the nice thing is that everything is combined all in one small little pouch. Now specifically the first thing we install is the leveling feet. Now the nice thing about these leveling feet is the fact that they're actually considerably long, meaning that it can account for large variances in the space that you're going to be assembling the cabinet on. Now each cabinet comes with four connector struts, but let's be honest, it's just an aluminum leg in more simplistic terms. Now they're all the exact same and pre-welded, which basically means there's very little chance of you screwing this one up. All I needed was a wrench, as well as the bolt and lock washers itself, tying them up on all four ends, then flipped it over onto the other side and did the same exact thing on that side. Now the only thing I should note is the fact that you want to make sure that the sides of your rails are also in line with the sides of your cabinet. Now this might not seem like a big deal, but after you start installing everything else, you will see the benefit. Now this construction adhesive is actually included in the kit, and this is the bottom side of the cabinet that I'm going to be applying it to. Now I do find out the fact that it actually is easier to install when you actually flip this over on the top so you have gravity working for you, but this is how I did it on the first couple, so give me a break and it is my first time installing one of these guys. There are two different types of fasteners that are used on this project. One has a flat head and the other one has more of a hex head. Now the flat head are always going to be installed on the outer surface of the cement board, but the hex heads are going to be installed on the interior surface. It's an easy way to distinguish between the two heads and where they actually need to go. Now our cabinet layout is pretty straightforward because we just have a straight run. The first cabinet on the left is going to be a 24 inch base cabinet that doesn't have any bells and whistles on it, it's just going to add extra countertop space which is perfect for this space. The second cabinet is the large 60 inch cabinet that I just put together. Now this cabinet will have our beautiful 40 inch barbecue as well as a cabinet below it that has a couple drawers as well as an access panel. Now the third cabinet on the far right side is going to be a 30 inch base cabinet and it will have a perfect little trash bin as well as a recycling bin as you need because you'll be cooking a lot with this beauty outside. Now at this point in time I'm assembling the two cabinets together using the hex head screws that I noted earlier. Now the most important thing to keep in mind at this point is making sure that the top of both cabinets are at the same height and are flush with each other. Now the system also comes with prefabricated end panels. Now all you need to do at this point is actually apply some construction adhesive and then attach the end panel with your flat head screws. Now specifically with these end panels, they do have a center support rail that you have to attach on the inside, which just gives it some extra stability. 
Now, after I have the first two cabinets fully assembled and attached together, I then proceed to the third and final cabinet. Now, with this process, it really does take a very short amount of time to assemble these entire things together. And the fact that everything is pre-made and I didn't have to make a single cut throughout this entire process with assembling the cabinets together is pretty remarkable and just shows the fact that they're actually very diligent about manufacturing these with the DIY friendly mindset because anyone with these tools can assemble this system together. Now as a side note, I did find it much easier to assemble the side panel as well as the bottom panel by actually using downward force as in laying the cabinet on its side or on its top to actually assemble those two panels. So just keep that in mind prior to fully assembling. Now once you have all three cabinets fully assembled and attached to each other, it's now time for leveling. Now the leveling aspect is a bit tricky here and there, but the nice thing about this is that the feet make it very easy to fully level everything out. And as you can see, the levels themselves are very easy to adjust. And once you do have them at the correct height, you go on the inside and you thread a nut all the way down to the bottom. That way the cabinet itself is not gonna be moving at all throughout eternity. Well, you know, for the foreseeable future. But as you can see, we do have a very small gap on the far left side there, but a larger gap on the right side. And that's specifically because we have a very significant patio grade away from the house. But guess what? Once we have this thing fully leveled, it's time to check out the barbecue. Now, luckily for us, we have Grillnetics that is also working with Somerset, and Somerset has super high quality grill systems. This is the Sizzler Pro Series 40 inch. I'm excited. Let's do it. Now this grill did come with very nice detailed cutout dimensions for our actual grill, but specifically I always wanna make sure I'm actually looking at the physical dimensions of the grill itself too, because the old adage, measure twice, cut once, will definitely come into play here because you don't wanna screw up this measurement, but luckily we didn't because we double checked our measurements. Now at this point I'm just taking the center line of my grill cabinet and then dispersing the measurements between both sides, that way I know I'm dead center in the middle of the 60 inch cabinet. Now after that, it's time to install our grill support arms. Now we need some extra support for this grill because it is a hefty grill. And yes, we do have a concrete countertop being attached here. However, you need some extra support and stability for this size of a grill as well as the weight of the countertop. These are pre-made, pre-manufactured support arms so I don't have to do any cutting whatsoever. I just need to fasten them to the cabinet itself. Now as for the countertop substrate, I'm using half inch cement board, which basically matches the existing panels of the cabinets themselves. Now this is not included in the cabinet system because the substrate material could change based upon the countertop type. Now if it was a granite or solid surface countertop type, you would most likely be using some type of plywood base. But with the fact that we are gonna be installing a concrete countertop, then I'm gonna be using a cement board base. Now I'm using my standard grinder with a diamond blade which makes quick work of any cement board. As for your measurements, you wanna make sure you take detailed instruction of where your measurements are being accounted for, such as the depth of that eight and a half inch dimension is accounted for the thickness of your countertop, so you have to keep that in mind. But you also have to account for that 20 and three quarter inch dimension is going off of the face of the cabinet, plus the thickness of the exterior material that you're gonna be applying to the exterior of the cabinet. Did that make sense? I think so. But if it didn't, please leave a comment in the description box below and I will make sure to answer it. Now I cut out the openings and apply the rest of my substrate to the countertop. I'm not gonna go in detail as far as the countertop goes because not everyone wants a concrete countertop. However, that's why I'm gonna be doing a dedicated concrete countertop video for my next video. So please check that out in the description box below if you're so interested. So now that we have the substrate for our countertop taken care of, it's now time to cut our holes for our cabinetry. The two cabinets that we're going with on this project are both stainless steel cabinets from Somerset. Now specifically, the first cabinet is a two drawer unit that is gonna be mounted directly underneath the grill system. Now once we drew out the hole placement, we then cut it out just like we did above, and then we actually apply some aluminum rails to both sides. That will just give more structurability for the opening as well as something to screw into once we mount the cabinetry. 
The second cabinet is for our trash pullout, and I wish I actually installed the rail systems on this section first prior to installing the substrate for the countertop. Now as you can see, it looks super roomy in there, and yes, I did do this without having overhead access, which did work out just fine, but it would have made life just a little bit easier if I didn't install the countertop substrate first. With that being said, it's still installed perfectly fine, and as you can see, it is one beautifully fully assembled solid as a rock system. Now it's time for a vertical surface, and for this, we are actually using Ardex OVP. Now this is a specific cement mix that is used for inter and exterior purposes for vertical surfaces, keyword vertical. Uh, but first we need to apply some cement board tape to make sure all these seams don't crack on us later on. Important step. Now if you've ever done any drywall and you've used some mesh tape, this is basically the exact same thing, but it's specifically for cement and thin set products. Now it's not a product that you have to have, but I would highly suggest getting it just because you want to ensure that there's no cracks after you apply your finish. The Ardex OVP product is a very specific product because not only do you need something that can go on a vertical surface, but you need something that can go on a vertical surface on the exterior. Now this product is specifically designed for both of those applications, which is why it's such a perfect product for this application. After you have the product mixed to the right consistency, which I would just generally consider super thick Greek yogurt, yeah, let's go with that, then you start applying it with a large trowel. Now with this application, you can have it super baby smooth, but I was working with a client that wanted more of a natural variance and look with a texture to it, which is why this product was so perfect because it had a very nice feel as I push it against the grain of the cabinet. Now I gave myself about four to five inches of space between the side of the cabinet to the house or to the large post right there. And specifically with that in mind, I didn't have enough room to get my trowel in there, but I did have enough room to get my hand in there. And with this product and the fact that we were doing more of a natural look, I was able to create a very natural texturized look with just my hand in a very small tight knit areas. So keep that in mind because even if you have a very tight area, doesn't mean that you can't apply Apply the finish to it while the cabinet's in its final resting position. Now I let the product dry overnight and then the next day I come back and I start installing the cabinetry. Now at this point the cabinet should move in fairly smoothly and with the fact that you have the support rails already there ready to go, all you have to do is fasten four bolts all together with both of the cabinets and they're fully functional. Well you do have to install the handles as well as rip off all this protection on the stainless steel but that's easy. Now once you have your cabinets installed, it's now time to install your finishing trim. For this product, we're only be applying a bottom layer of trim to basically just mask the fact that we have levelers on the bottom of this cabinetry. The nice thing about this trim is that it's ASIC paint grade exterior trim where all I have to do is apply a layer of construction adhesive on the back side and then use their Cortex fasteners to be fully concealed for the most part. Now I've used this product on a couple different projects, most specifically a window and deck renovation. Now this product is very nice because the fact that you have a perfectly fastened fastener that's completely sealed with a cap is a very nice finished look. Now after you have the back trim board fully assembled, I then proceed to the front and actually measure out where I need to cut out spaces for the camera to fit in between the trim. That's because obviously the cabinets are lower than the height of the trim, but with this trim, it's a PVC type product and therefore it's very easy to cut with a standard jigsaw. Now as you're fastening and using these Cortex fasteners for the trim, just remember that if you're going into the cabinet, you need to pre-drill your hole first and then install it with the fastener. This is because you're going through aluminum and these screws are not set up and tapped for aluminum penetration. However, if you pre-drill your holes, they fit no problem. Just make sure you take off the layer of protection on the trim because you do not want to paint over that. 
I run a bit of high quality caulk around the entire perimeter of the trim just to make sure I have a crisp clean line all the way across. Be aware that the caulk should read paintable, keyword paintable. After I have that taken care of, I then proceed to cutting an opening for our ventilation gate that comes with the Grillnetics kit. Just figured I would get this dusty part out of the way prior to painting. As for the paint portion of this project, we are using Locks On by Sherwin-Williams. Now this is a perk paint for this type of application because it's specifically a paint and primer in one for exterior masonry. This was a perfect product for this type of application and I just used a foam roller with a paintbrush to just tidy up those tight knit areas at the top and bottom. I did have to apply two coats to this entire surface just to make sure that it had consistent even coverage over the entire area. As you can see, it covers very well with one coat, but because this is a white paint going on a dark surface, you definitely want to have two coats. And just like any of the products or tools that you see in this video, I will leave links in the description box below on where to actually purchase them. After I let the paint dry, I then come back around and caulk all the edges of the stainless steel cabinetry as well as remove all the extra tape. Now specifically, you don't have to caulk all the edges if you don't want to, but I feel like it's a very nice professional look at the tail end of a project. Plus in my mind, it just says, hey, look, I was done by a professional. Oh yeah. At this time I install our ventilation gate and just a key note is that if you're working with natural gas it should be on the higher side because natural gas is lighter than air. If you're working with propane it should be on the lower side because propane is heavier than air. Just keep that in mind. Okay so this is our natural gas line and I just created this hole in the side of the unit so I can fit our piping. And our pipe needs to go all the way across the side of the cabinet to right here, but it needs to be connected right here. So we do have a few fittings that we had to add to it to make sure it worked, but this is a uh, half inch pipe, but we had to reduce it down to a 3 8 inch gas line. So just keep that in mind. Now let's be honest, anytime you're working with flammable products, you want to ensure the safety of others. Therefore, you want to make sure that you have the proper fittings fitting exactly where they need to be, as well as you're using the proper thread tape. Now this is yellow thread tape that's specifically designed for natural gas usage, and therefore is the perfect tape for this application. But make sure you are using the right products for this type of application in your area. Now at this point, hopefully you have someone with a helpful hand that can lift this beautiful but large barbecue into position, set it, connect your piping in the back as well as connect your electrical requirements, then turn on your gas. Now the quick step that I would always note is make sure you take some soapy water and actually spray your fittings down just to make sure that there's no leaks that you can see. If there are leaks, then you'll see small bubbles coming to the surface. If you do see that, turn your gas off and hopefully you just need to tighten your fittings down just a little bit more. At this point in time, I want to ensure that every single burner is working properly, but guess what? After you check that, you are done. You've got to love when a project comes together like this between all the different types of materials that just seamlessly come together and work perfectly in harmony with each other. It makes me truly feel proud to be a part of a project like this because there were so many different types of elements that I personally hadn't used before, but after all the hard work that was put into this system, you can stand back and be proud to the fact that this is a one of a kind piece and one that is obviously a beautiful, sexy beast. Oh, and did I mention that it has LEDs? Well, in that case, let's get to grilling. I mean, someone's got to actually break this bad boy in. You know, it's hard to see something that's so beautiful get a little dirty, but it is fulfilling its purpose, so you gotta love that, right? And trust me, those burgers were delicious. 
Now this is one piece that will be used for years and years to come. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, you like this barbecue, don't you? You love it. 